Good morning and happy Palm Sunday. I'm Pastor Lori and I'm so grateful to be in worship with you today. We're glad that you're here. We'd love to know that you're watching. You can let us know by clicking like if you're watching on Facebook or say hello in the comments. Maybe greet those who are watching with you and saying hello as well. Here at Woodlawn, we're committed to maintaining this service for a couple of reasons that are really important to us. We want this service to be available for those who are unable to attend church in person for whatever that reason might be. And we also want to offer this service to folks who are interested in learning a little bit more about who Woodlawn is as a community of faith and grace. You can find all that information and more on our website at woodlawnumc.net. This is the beginning of a big week in the life of the church. Palm Sunday starts the events of Holy Week as we lead up to Easter. And so I want you to know about some things that are going on at the church and invite you to attend. Here at the church um, this morning, we have special services for our Palm Sunday service. We have the choir and the bells. The children are performing special music and playing bells themselves. We'll also have the children doing a palm parade. Our services are at 9 o'clock and at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary and in the worship center, respectively. And then as we head on into Holy Week, we'll have a Monday Thursday service at 7 o'clock in the, in the sanctuary, excuse me, and then in the worship center on Good Friday, our service will be at 7 o'clock. Easter Sunday, we'll have a sunrise service. Easter is March 31st, next Sunday, a week from today. Sunrise service is at 7.30 in the morning. We'll meet at the crosses and welcome the holy sunrise and start off our day. Following Easter sunrise, we'll have a breakfast, 9 o'clock service in the sanctuary, 10 o'clock service in the worship center, and then an Easter egg hunt following our contemporary 10 o'clock service. I hope that you have a, a blessed and reflective Holy Week as we continue our journey to the cross. We'll begin our time of worship today with an opening prayer, and then uh, we'll have some music. Then I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer for this Palm Sunday. Pastor Lance is going to bring us our special message. It might look familiar. This is his Palm Sunday message from last year, but we know that God's word continues to speak to us new and fresh every different day. So I'll invite you to be in an attitude of prayer with me as we share together in this opening prayer and then enjoy the music as we begin our time of worship. Would you please pray with me? The words are on your screen. Almighty God, on this day, your son, Jesus Christ, entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord, following him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen.
We come together now in a time of prayer together as communal prayer. If you have a prayer request or a joy you'd like to share and you're watching on Facebook, please share that in the comments. We'd love to pray with you and for you or celebrate with you. You can also call the church office if you have a prayer need to let the pastors know and be aware and we'll be in touch with you and praying for you. I'll lift up a pastoral prayer for us on this Palm Sunday, and then I invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Would you pray with me? Holy and merciful God, as we begin this, this holy week, this holiest of weeks, with our Palm Sunday, we, we recognize that, that this is the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem triumphantly with shouts of Hosanna and celebration. The crowd cheered. Their king had come. But those shouts would soon turn to cries of crucifixion, asking for his death. 
the heaviness of this week, the whiplash of, of shouts of Hosanna to cries of, of crucifixion are hard on our hearts. But Lord, they remind us that joy and sorrow always coexist. We have an intention, our, our, our joys and our celebrations all the time. And we know, Lord, that you are big enough to hold them both when we grieve, when we are lonely, when we are searching or seeking, when we are desperate for answers. God, you are there. When we are ecstatic, when we are celebrating, when we are overjoyed, connecting in relationship, God, you are there. You are there, God, and you are here with us. And for that, we give you thanks. So we come today on this Palm Sunday, raising our palms to you with shouts of Hosanna, knowing that you can hold our praise and you can hold our sorrows. Help us to lean on you in all times, regardless of our circumstance. And help us to, to be moved by your Holy Spirit that our hands and our feet might be the answer to prayer for another person. That you might work through us to bring about your good in this world. For all that, God, we give you thanks. And we lift up to you now the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On this Palm Sunday, we're reminded once again that John's telling of specific stories in Jesus's life is different from Matthew and Mark and Luke's telling of these same stories. This is true of the principal story for this week, the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The other Gospels concern themselves with sending the disciples to go and find the donkey, borrow it, or in the case of Matthew, to borrow a donkey and her colt for Jesus to ride upon. And the people shout and wave their branches and welcome their new king. And then in those other Gospels, Jesus goes immediately to the temple and drives the money changers out of it. But John tells the events of this day differently. In fact, in John's gospel, Jesus already had turned the tables over in the temple way back in the second chapter of his gospel, right at the beginning, right after he turned the water into wine at the wedding in Cana. This time... He returns to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and John mostly wants us to know that Jesus is being coronated a king as he enters Jerusalem for the very last time. I'm going to read from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 12 through 18. On the next day, when the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, indeed, the King of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Do not fear, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things for him. 
So the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify about him. For this reason also, the people went to meet him because they had heard that he had performed this sign. When Jesus enters in through the eastern gate to the city of Jerusalem that morning, the disciples and the crowd are joyous. They're energized. Shouts of Hosanna ring out as he makes his way through the crowds. The people are looking for someone they can rally around, someone to carry the banner of freedom and liberation for the Jewish people. And so as Jesus enters Jerusalem, they shout, Hosanna, which means save us, save us. And they shout, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And in John's gospel, they shout something that they don't shout in Matthew or Mark or Luke. They shout, indeed, here is the King of Israel. Jesus spies a young donkey. No, no borrowing or thievery is required by the disciples in John's gospel. Jesus just sees the animal and sits upon it. John makes the conclusion, as it is written, do not fear, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. So Jesus enters Jerusalem riding a donkey, an animal considered perhaps a little bit absurd and ridiculous. His path is lined with the frayed cloaks of his impoverished and ragtag followers who were holding in the air a few straggly palm branches, shouting at the top of their lungs, the king is coming, the king has arrived, Hosanna, save us. Now, they don't mean save us the way our modern Christian ears might hear those words. It's not save us from our sin. It's not save us from eternal damnation or death. No, no, no. On this day, in this parade of palms, the king has arrived and the people are shouting, save us, king, save us from Rome. Mm. Save us from the Roman occupiers. Save us from the beast. Save us from the oppression of the Roman guard and soldiers. Save us from the tyranny and the taxation of the Roman emperor, the restrictions on their worship. Save us from Rome. Hosanna. Indeed, here they believe is the true king of Israel. And this is why they're so excited to coronate a new king. They believe this is the instrument that will drive Rome out of their land. But Jesus hasn't come to be in Jerusalem. He's not setting up a palace. He's passing through. He's traveling through town. He enters the city by the Golden Gate on the east wall of the city of Jerusalem, where he encounters the palm-waving crowds. But this isn't, this isn't a parade. It's, well, it's a funeral march. The same Jesus being coronated and glorified today will end up suffering and dying on a cross by the end of the week in the most horrific form of state-sanctioned execution the world has ever known. Humiliating, excruciating, demoralizing disgusting even. And this will be the glory of God, God's power and glory on exhibit as Jesus dies 
stretched out on a cross, when he'll say simply, it is finished, and breathe his last. To treat Palm Sunday as though it's a destination is a mistake. We can't forget that the road that Jesus traveled led not just into Jerusalem, but through the streets where he was mocked and jeered and beaten. The road that Jesus walks is a road that does not end there in the city. It continues on through the lion's gate on the other side, the west side of the city. And then the road makes a steep climb up a hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull. He had tried, he had tried many times to tell his disciples this is what lay in store for him when he goes to Jerusalem, but they could not comprehend it. They could not believe it. Save us, they all had shouted when he entered the city. And in the end, they see that he's unable to even save himself from his own horrible fate at the hands of Rome. The great reformer, Martin Luther, spent a fair amount of time and ink articulating the difference between a theology of glory and the theology of the cross. According to Luther, a theology of glory looks for God in the strong and the beautiful and the powerful. It is concerned with health and happiness and prosperity. In other words, what God can do for us that will give us more power and more recognition and more success. A theology of glory understands God based on our own understanding and definition of those words, power and glory. By contrast, Luther's theology of the cross understands God in the light of what the crucifixion reveals about God. This theology looks for God in the places where we most feel God's absence in pain and humiliation, suffering, weakness, foolishness, and sin. A theology of the cross is built upon what looks like failure and feels like disaster. While a theology of glory calls evil good and good evil, a theology of the cross calls a thing what it is. Death is death. Sin is sin. Suffering is suffering, and evil is evil. There's nothing we can do to make them more palatable. There's no window dressing that can pretty them up. But as Dr. Delmer Chilton writes in Living at Cross Purposes, he says, this is precisely where we find God. This in the painful moments of life. In the book Silence by Shisako Endo, uh, which recently was made into a, a film, a young Jesuit priest named Sebastio Rodriguez is sent to Japan. The year is 1639, and Sebastio Rodriguez is sent to investigate reports that his mentor, another Jesuit priest missionary, had renounced his faith in Japan. When Rodriguez arrives, he discovers that the brutal government has driven Christians into hiding in Japan. The security forces demand that anyone who is even suspected of being Christian 
be brought to trample upon a crudely carved image of Christ and then renounce their faith. If they refuse to do so, then they are slowly tortured to death. Eventually, the priest Rodriguez is captured and he's forced to watch Japanese Christians, one after another, lay down their lives for their faith. The Japanese authorities force the priest to watch other Christians being tortured, and they tell him if he will just renounce his faith, then their torture of the others will stop. Now, Rodriguez, the priest, he accepts the idea that he must be prepared to suffer for his own faith, but he struggles over how self-centered and perhaps even cruel it is to not renounce his own faith when refusing to do so causes others to suffer so much. As he listens to the moaning of those who are being tortured, the priest finally tramples upon the image of Christ. And as he does so, he hears Jesus speaking to him. You may trample. You may trample. I was born into this world to be trampled upon. It was to share your pain that I carried my cross. Today, we sing Hosanna, save us. We sing Hosanna for a king whose most powerful, whose most glorious act will be his death on a cross for our forgiveness, for our salvation, to save us. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Receive this blessing. God has heard the cries of those who are in pain and has sent his son to save us. Hosanna. Thanks be to God.